Boy, do I have a cool video for you today because this is the brand new Hyundai Santa Cruz. That's right, the small compact pickup truck, or is it trucklet, from Hyundai. And in this video, we are gonna take it off-road. We're gonna see how it does in the dirt, and of course, put it on the TFL slip test to see how the all-wheel drive system works. Let's hit it. The Santa Cruz is interesting because really in the front, in the business end of things, this is a Hyundai Tucson, which is a crossover. But it's all party in the back because they have removed the SUV portion of the Tucson and replaced it with a little truck bed, a four foot bed that you can use for truck stuff. Now, is this a truck, is this a car? Let me know in the comment section below. I call this a pickup car. Because yes, it does have a bed like a standard pickup, but it really isn't a truck. It's not body on frame, it doesn't have a low range, it's really a car based vehicle. So pick up car. The first of our off-road test is going to be this forest service road. So it's bumpy, rutted out, it's got some nice holes and rocks in it. Here comes a guy in a Willys edition Wrangler jail. Um, and I have to say it's performing really quite well. So just under nine inches of ground clearance. Uh, independent suspension all around, not too much in terms of under, underbody protection, but even still, it's got enough clearance for these holes. Visibility is good. I like the size of this vehicle. This is what they call a compact um, in the pickup world right now. Actually, Hyundai calls it a sport adventure vehicle, I believe, sport activity vehicle. I think it's adventure. And for this kind of thing, the Santa Cruz is perfect. And I think this is pretty much all that most owners will end up doing with it. A dirt roads, service roads, maybe really, really mild trails, you know, just enough to get you to the cool hiking spots and the cool climbing spots. And that's really where I think this vehicle excels. Now, 281 horsepower, such a rocket on the road. It really goes like a stabbed rat when you push it. And it's one of the best parts about this vehicle from an on-road standpoint, it's just all the available power. Off-road, you're only using, I don't know, one one hundredth of all that horsepower and torque. But uh, yeah, very good on this kind of stuff. Down here in the Santa Cruz, we've got a few drive selectors. First of all, drive mode, normal, sport, smart, and snow. Unfortunately, no off-road mode. So I think what we're gonna do is just leave it in good old fashioned normal. Next to that, this little lock button, it looks like a center diff. Now this vehicle doesn't have a traditional center differential like you'd find on a Land Cruiser. It really is more of like a PTO or a power takeoff, but it will still lock it into quote all wheel drive. And then to the right of that, Hill descent control or downhill brake control as they call it. And check that out, they even gave it a little image of the tiny pickup. This is the TFL slip test. So what we do is we get various wheels stuck on purpose in these rollers to see how the all wheel drive system and traction control system work to get us unstuck. Now the first test, the front wheel slip test. So both front wheels stuck in the rollers. The rear wheels are gonna have to engage to get us unstuck into neutral, nice and settled into drive, foot off the brake and gently on the throttle. All right, very good result. Next up, the diagonal slip test. So the left front and the right rear totally stuck. The other two opposite ends of the car are gonna to have to engage to get us unstuck. Same procedure, still in normal mode, nothing locked up, into drive, and here we go. All right, so it's spinning. Now the traction control should engage, which it did, locked up the brakes, forced power to the wheels with grip, and we came right off. This is the three-wheeled slip test, so both rears are stuck. The left front is stuck, only the right front has traction. Now, for this test, I am going to do my central lock engage, my all-wheel drive lock. We're nice and settled. See what happens, foot off the brake, onto the throttle. Wow, that is a whole lot of not much going on. Let me try turning my lock off. Uh, okay, well it tried to kind of send a little bit of torque there. Let me give it one more go. 
Come on, figure it out. Figure it out. Yeah, we're not really going anywhere. We're pretty close, but the uh, traction control is not doing as good of a job as I would like of sending torque to the wheel with traction. All right, Case, I'm gonna need you to give me a push, buddy. I think uh, that's as good as we're gonna do today. All right, you ready, dude? Give it a little shove. A little disappointed by the Santa Cruz on the rollers. I think a little bit of programming could be done to uh, maybe include an off-road mode where it squeezes down hard on the brake calipers to send power to the wheels uh, that have traction because right now there's no off-road mode. There's a few others but no off-road mode um, and pretty much regardless of what you do it doesn't do a very good job of torque distribution left and right. I think that is an area they could improve on. Um, even with software, of course, a limited slipper or locker would be even better, but uh, we'll see what this translates to off-road up Tombstone Hill. I have a feeling it's going to start looking pretty open diffy with no traction aids as we uh, get off kilter. The Hyundai Santa Cruz is not a pickup that you might think of in the conventional sense, so unlike a Tacoma or a Ranger or a Colorado, this is a unibody design, which means the actual body structure is integral to the strength of the vehicle there's no ladder frame underneath it um, the other thing you need to know no low range transfer case so it's just a single speed now obviously this is not going to be a rock crawler in the moab sense but i do want to see if it has enough capability to get you to the really cool campsites cool climbing spots that kind of thing that's why we're bringing it up here to tombstone hill tombstone hill has two sides the right side is a little easier we call it truth the left side is gnarly we call that there even the easy side though is very, very steep, some 30 degrees. And this is the real world. This is not some built out lab that we made. This is, you know, a real Colorado trail. So uh, I'm gonna lock up the center, center diff, if you will. And we start to see one of the issues with the Santa Cruz right off the bat. This vehicle doesn't have a low range and it also has a dual clutch transmission in this configuration. And dual clutches are excellent on the road, but they they often have a hard time off-road. Um, I'm gonna have to take a different angle even right at the start because I don't quite hit the approach angle. Let me move the camera. So this Santa Cruz is rolling on a set of 20 inch wheels wrapped in Michelin tires. Now this is just an all season tire. This is not a good setup for off-road driving. Let me make that very clear. If you're looking at off-roading a Santa Cruz, get more of an entry level spec with a smaller wheel and then go ahead and stick your own aggressive tire on it. The uh, spec on this one is a limited, of course, all wheel drive. We're talking $41,000 on this truck. All right, we are already really struggling on this first portion of the hill. Don't have the approach angle. Come on, come on, figure it out. There it goes, okay, so I got two wheels in the air. Same thing here. Come on, traction control, figure out what you need to do. Foot to the floor. I have the center all-wheel drive system locked up, and now we're going. That was already a real challenge. Not a lot of articulation with the independent suspension. Trying to maintain a little bit of momentum so that we give those dual clutches a shot with no torque converter. Um, but, uh, lost the momentum. Come on, come on, figure it out. Grinding those clutches, lifting up tires. Yeah, this is really struggling. Um, we're, we're making it, we're moving. Okay, well, we did it. Right, well, I think that's about all that the Santa Cruz wants to give me right now. Um, so let's see how the downhill assist works. Downhill braking control is turned on. Uh, let me go into first gear on the uh, eight speed dual clutch. Holy cow, it is not slowing me down very well. This is a very fast hill departure system or a downhill system. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go to the brake. It's not, not holding me in a comfortable speed. Good visibility out of the Santa Cruz, though, I do have to say. 
I'm having an easy time seeing out of the vehicle. Brakes feel good. Steering is nice and direct. Not too fast, so it's not trying to fight me off road, but it's doing a good job of, you know, pointing the wheels where they need to go without whipping around like some uh, higher speed racks might do. Lift the wheel here, I think. Ugh. All right, well, we did it. We were able to go up and down the hill, but not without some difficulty. I interrupt this off-road video for a quick rapid-fire gadgets and gizmos. The cool things around the Santa Cruz, starting with this, the integrated bumper step, just like you'd find on these Silverado trucks. The Santa Cruz is covered in Easter eggs, including these little images of the Santa Cruz itself mounted on the moldings for all four fender flares. The Santa Cruz has a lockable storage area underneath this tonneau cover, which comes on some of the higher-end equipped Santa Cruzes. Now, you'll notice you can't actually get into this area without first unlocking the tailgate that allow you to get into the pickup area and then there's this little itty bitty kind of lock underneath here which you can then use to swing open the tonneau and now of course you have access to the bed to close it up they give you the strap tug it closed and then it locks in position then of course you can lock the bed and you can't get in there whatsoever they say this is water resistant not waterproof but at least a little bit water resistant, which is better than an open bed. Believe it or not though, the lockable storage doesn't end there because we've got an integrated bed trunk in the very back of the Santa Cruz. Lift up on the floor and you've got this big cubby, all right, maybe not big, but somewhat usable cubby underneath the bed floor. You also have drains in here so you could fill it up with ice and use this area as a cooler. Now the cool thing about this, if you close it and then close the tailgate, and then lock the vehicle, you can't actually reach in there and get to the open lever whatsoever. So this is also sort of lockable. Now I said the front of the Santa Cruz is based on the Tucson. That is true, but it's also a total lie because even though the overall light signature grille and front end design looks similar to the Tucson, it's actually all new for the Santa Cruz. And if you see them side by side, it's more angular on the Santa Cruz. So none of this is interchangeable with its cousin. This whole center stack looks pretty similar to the Tucson, and in fact it is. You've got a very similar display, of course, full touchscreen. I like the old school radio tubes, by the way, when you tune the audio stations. Very, very nice. Now, all these controls are actually not buttons. They look like buttons, but they're all touch sensitive, which is a specific pain for adjusting the volume up and down. Come on, Hyundai, give us a volume knob. Now below that, you've got your climate control. Once again, all touch sensitive buttons. It works better than something like, oh, Cadillac Q system from maybe five, 10 years ago. That was horrible. So this is better than that, but still I do miss some old school buttons. What is different between the Santa Cruz and the Tucson? Bam, check that out, the shift selector. So the Tucson has buttons, but on the Santa Cruz, they gave it an old school forward to backward T selector. I much prefer this design. The Santa Cruz is an excellent vehicle for light off-roading on, for example, dirt roads or maybe even the occasional forest road, but for rock crawling or getting you to the really far out campsites, probably not the best option in the pickup class. It doesn't have the low range and the dual clutch is kind of a bummer. Now I'd love to take the standard automatic with a smaller um, horsepower engine out here to see how that does out in the dirt because I think it would do probably better than the dual clutch in this vehicle. But of course, if you just want to get to the trailhead and then take your bikes out or your dog out and go for the hike, I think the Santa Cruz is probably up for the task. Well, let me know what you think in the comments section below and check out tfloffroad.com for the latest and greatest in new and used car and truck reviews.